Spotting the dangers of the COVID jabs is literally child's play now. In the United States, lab tests conducted by three high school students found potentially dangerous levels of DNA contamination in Pfizer's so-called COVID vaccines. A stress for emphasis, school-age kids can identify, let's say, problems with those products. Those products that have already gone into hundreds of millions of arms and that are still being offered today, along with more products like them, on account of multi-million dollar contracts between Big Pharma and governments around the world. Working under supervision by scientists from the Food and Drug Administration, that's the FDA, the school kids found contamination in the so-called vaccine products of the sort that can cause cancer. Some results found a level of rogue DNA left behind by perhaps substandard manufacturing processes as much as 470 times higher than that permitted by the industry's own regulatory safety limits. So let's be clear, randomly selected batches of Pfizer's jab were found to contain high levels of DNA contamination with the potential to stimulate the growth of cancerous tumours in human tissue. And I say again, the finding is contained in a report authored by three high school kids following lab work they completed themselves albeit under the supervision of FDA wonks. The findings were published at the end of December last year in the Journal of High School Science. Even I'm tired of saying you couldn't make it up, but the Journal of High School Science, well, you couldn't make it up. I read all this and contemplate the plain reality that school-aged children are able to conduct tests that show that the sort of jabs that went into hundreds of millions of human arms, now, how to express this thought without risking censorship, tests that show that three years after the first of the jabs, questions of a fundamental nature remain to be answered. Investigative reporter Marianne de Massey was the first to report on the published study. The research, performed at the FDA's White Oak campus in Maryland, found that levels of residual DNA in the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine were six to 470 times higher than regulatory safety limits. The students tested two lots of the vaccine, finding they contained residual DNA to a level that exceeds 10 nanograms per dose. The potential high risk posed by residual small DNA fragments is currently unknown, the study stated. However, the authors also said that DNA contamination may result in insertional mutagenesis or DNA mutations that can cause cancer. Speaking last month on the Defender in Depth, Kevin McKernan, who first identified DNA contamination in the shots in 2023, said DNA and vaccines can pose health risks because the DNA could integrate into the genome and cause disruption of the genome, or it could disrupt other genes that are related to cancer. The FDA did not respond to multiple requests for comment on the study. It's vital to point out that the findings by the school children are a very long way from being the first of their kind. Analysts have been saying for years that the jabs are contaminated. A couple of months ago, podcaster and former nurse Dr John Campbell reported on work carried out by Dr David Speaker, a Canadian virologist and analytical scientist who had by then analysed 32 vials of so-called COVID vaccine collected from several different countries and found DNA contamination in every single one of them. Like the contamination found by the students in the US, what Dr Speaker found was contamination of the sort with the potential to alter the DNA of a person injected with it, resulting in cancer-causing mutations. The whole world, the population of the whole world, is more than three years into what I believe it's fair to describe as the greatest crime ever inflicted upon our species by other members of our species. More than three years after the start of the outrage, after billions of people have received jabs of this sort of stuff, jabs of mRNA, so-called vaccines, and surely it's time to start calling these products what they actually are, which is to say not vaccines at all, but gene therapies. 
With these gene therapies still being pushed, with our government and those of other countries, including Australia and Canada, tucked up in bed with Moderna and other big pharma companies, with contracts for the production of hundreds of millions of doses of yet more gene therapies. After all of that, death and permanent injuries of as yet uncounted numbers of people as a direct result of the state-driven administering of those products. It falls to high school students to conduct tests and publish a report proving the products are, and always have been, contaminated with DNA with the potential to alter DNA and cause cancer in anyone receiving them. How can this be? Me and others like me have been shouting about this sort of information for almost all of that time, also demanding a hearing for scores of highly credentialed medical professionals like Professor Angus Dalgleish, just as a for instance, who last year reported on what he heard at a conference held in Perth, Australia. They got all the evidence that the messenger RNA vaccines there, they're all completely contaminated. They are just not fit for purpose. The Pfizer's are all full of SV40. SV40 was what, in in my day, we put into mice to make them grow tumours so we could pour chemotherapy into them to see if it worked for the tumours. And we are putting this into humans for a disease that hasn't killed anybody for at least two years? It is beyond belief. Just last week, Dr Campbell reported on the suspension of a trial of a new mRNA jab for RSV, which is respiratory syncytial virus. The trial was paused, and paused is the word used by those conducting the trial. Paused after it was found that children and the children in question were under two years old, that children injected with the trial jab were five times more likely, five times more likely to contract RSV than those who didn't receive the jab. One of those that contracted RSV after receiving the jab needed to be put on a ventilator. The second phase of the trial planned for, but that has not gone ahead, not yet, was to jab 100 babies under a year old. Um, Who were the subjects in this uh, experimental trial? Children aged younger than two. Incredible. So some parents have taken their children along to be injected with this experimental genetic preparation. You might have your views on that. Speaking personally, I do have views on that, but I think they're pretty clear by now. I mentioned those multi-million dollar contracts governments like our own have entered into with companies like Moderna to push ahead with these gene therapies. So much potential profit hanging off jabs like those, which begs the question, what happens if there are more bumps along the road to hell? Bumps like that one, the proposed RSV gene therapy. How on earth will those companies and our governments clear the path to those necessary profits? Just one of many unanswered questions. But back to the story I started with about the high school students and the DNA contamination they found. The long, drawn-out aftermath of this whole shaming saga of greed. And as far as I'm concerned, greed is what it has been about. Greed, at the very least, is now taking on some of the appearance of another children's crusade. The original children's crusade happened in the early 13th century, when it was made the responsibility of children from France and Germany to establish a new Christian kingdom in Jerusalem. The adults wouldn't do it, so it fell to children. And according to popular accounts, many of these children ended up being sold as slaves in the markets of North Africa. And now, since too few grown-ups have had the backbone to ask the necessary questions, take the necessary action, More children are inheriting the job of pointing out the dangers of a problem that, while not of their making, has taken its most egregious toll on children. I ask another question. How much more must be revealed? How much more completely must the crime be exposed before there are consequences for so much harm done to so many?